Hey, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf. And I'm May Flom. And we have a really fun show for you today. May has pulled the creativity out. What did you call it? Techie Tuesday? Yes. <laughs> so everything we talked about last week, she's pulled out everything to do this week, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite is going to be the watercolors. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, May, how was your weekend? It was good. So I've got I've got a fun one. I've got a tip. So this is a fun uh, little mask here, and I added vinyl to it. Oh, I love that. So I added different colors. Vinyl, this is a friend of mine's logo. Um, it's her initial with little star in there. So this was really fun, but I have a really good tip. And that is if you're going to iron on vinyl, you need to protect your elastic. Oh, I fried, yeah. I fried my elastic on this one. Oh, that's a good learning. Fine. I'm going to be able to, you know, seam ripper, get the seam ripper out, pull the elastic out and put new in. But it was a, I thought it'd be a good reminder if anybody decides to go with vinyl, protect your elastic. <laughs> well, you know, I think, first of all, the vinyl is a great idea because we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks that if you embroider on that, you have to have a second layer of fabric because you don't want the little holes. The vinyl solves the whole problem. <laughs> It does. Just be careful with that iron. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can see it. There's a, there's pieces of it. it's. If I give it a good pull, this whole thing is gonna. Here, I'll put it out here so you can kind of oh, see. Yeah. It. Like, it. There's melty pieces and. Oh yeah. At She's least melty. it's fixable. At least it's fixable. <laughs> That's fantastic. I can see everybody rolling in. Welcome everyone. We are live on. Uh, well, brother brand ambassadors have taken over the brother. Facebook page and YouTube page, and we're also on Brother Crafting page. We're all over today, uh, which is going to be very exciting. And if you missed today, no worries, because you can watch the replay, or if you pop in for a second and share it to your timeline, then it's easier to find. So, well, May, I am I can hardly wait to see uh, what you're going to show us today, because I, I'm just so excited. The watercolors, I just can hardly wait, but uh, you can do anything you want. <laughs> So what I did today, what I brought down is I just brought down some watercolor paper. Um, and these are actually, this watercolor paper is actually um, on the back side of it. It's a postcard. So if you wanted to turn it into a postcard, I have never once made a watercolor postcard. So what I tend to use this for, I got it on sale. What I tend to use it for is just the front side, you know, just as watercolor paper. It just happens to be cut five by seven. So we've got a couple different things we're going to do. This is the drawing tool for the Scan and Cut. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about that yesterday. So this is the drawing tool. And it's what it does is you can put, I'm going to say, almost any pen or pencil or whatever is in there. It has to be able to fit inside. So some of those pens that are like a really, maybe a, almost like a rectangular shape or a really large pen, those are not going to work if it's too large. Um, it's not very many that would be. And then if it's really super skinny, like I have a really super skinny pencil that I like to use for tracing embroidery designs for hand stitching. I just, it was way too skinny though. It wouldn't stay put. So if you get one that's way too skinny, what you can do is just get some washi tape or some masking tape and just kind of, I don't know, let's see, on a pen, maybe, I don't know, maybe a, an inch or two up, just wrap it around a bit okay. so that it will hold so that it will in here what you can do when you have this and you look at it you can see where the gripping is because this has a little bit that turns so you can see where the grip is and when you see where the grip is you can just make sure to wrap tape around there to thicken it up so you can use things that are too skinny it's just if it's too wide to fit in here which won't be very many pens um, then those ones wouldn't work but the tape works really well and I do. So I have done that where I put a pencil in here and drawn a design and then went and hand embroidered the design and it, you know, covered up, wash it away because it's the right pen or pencil for it. You can do things like um, if I have a marker pen that is not going to react with water, you could do something like draw a really cool design and then come in there with like inks and paints and things and paint over it because it wouldn't react. It wouldn't blend and bleed and cause problems. You could also, if you have watercolor pens and there's a bunch of different kinds of brush pens that will advertise themselves as like watercolor effect. If you could use any of those to draw a design. Oh, 
And then, so you would want watercolor paper because you want that reactivity that that has. And then what you would do is you would draw your design and then add water. So that's what we'll do first. I've got a couple different, I've got a couple different things that we're going to talk about technique wise, but this will be our first one. So I've got my mat. Okay. It's very sticky. I can always tell when it rips really loud like that, that my, my mat's really good and sticky. And I'm just going to put my paper. I'm putting mine top center. It doesn't have to be. I'm just, that's where I'm going to set this. And then I'm going to go ahead. We can go over to the machine here. Let's see. I'll bring this up. Oops, wrong one. Here you go. There we go. Okay. Go over to the machine there. And I'll show you here. Look, I found all of my styluses this morning. They're all here. <laughs> it's so funny. Last week I couldn't find any of them. And then this morning I went to set up and they were all right there. That was another thing we just talked about yesterday. Oh my gosh. I said I have either have zero or 10 of them all in the same place. Yeah, they all showed up and I'm just laughing and laughing because it's like, okay, well, great. I guess we're using them. So my marker pen, what I want to do, you'll notice that this is in the holder. This has a holder. The reason for that is we want to be able to see. So this line, this, this, and I'll use the stylus just so I can put it in there. So this is going to show us where the stylus is there is the tip of the saw is going to be where it draws. So you wouldn't want it way down here where it was trying to push past the cutting surface. You would want it so that it hits the cutting surface. And that's why you put it in here so that you can see where your pen is going to be or a okay. pencil or whatever you're using. And then what we'll do is we'll put this in. And oops. when it's touching there, what we'll do is turn this and what that does is tighten it and you can kind of feel it and if it's not there it is if it's not tight enough keep turning and that's it so then what we do we pull this over here and pull out the blade that's how easy it is to remove the blade and then we're going to take this and set it in just where the blade would be and just press that lever down that's done that's it so easy Okay, now we're gonna pick our pattern. So we're gonna to go to, let's see, we'll go to pattern and we'll pick, you can pick anything you want. Let's find something fun here. I actually, I just, oops, I just switched microphones. So if you guys have any problems, let me know. I'm just switching mics so you can hear her better. Oh, okay. Is everything coming through clear? I think so. Okay. So I'm just going to go in and we'll just pick a leaf for now just so we can get an idea of how this is going to work. And then I already know that this is centered. So all I have to do is center that. And then when you go into select, you're going to select draw. So it knows that it's drawing, not cutting. And start. And it's really cool because this is going to go just like it would anything like it would cutting except while we're drawing now this is a brush tip pen so something to remember is that the brush tip pens or different tips on different pens will result in possibly different results especially if it's a really wide brush tip and when you're working on it it's going to um like get a wider edge on one side as it turns and i'll show you what i mean although this one looks like it's doing a real good job there you can see it's coming together that looks awesome. Okay, so the first thing we'll want to do is, if you're done, get at a, and you're using a pen that's you know like this is a watercolor pen. Get the lid back on it. Put it away. Get the lid back on it before you start playing with this because you don't want to dry out your pen or ruin your pen. Just, just ask my husband about that. If I ever see him with my pens with the caps off, I'm like a freak about it. <laughs> Not anymore, but, uh, well, yeah, I actually am. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. And then we will grab, let's see. Oh, I need to reach over and get the water brush. So the water brush will be the next part. You just want something. You could do a paintbrush with water on it. You're just going to need something. And I always use my own hand to, to get it started. You want something that will react with your color. 
So as we start doing this, you can see how it's starting to bleed and blend. And then what we'll do is we'll try one with multiple colors because you could do different colors. You don't have to just do the one color, but what's really cool about this is you get the experience of a watercolor, but it's so much easier because you didn't have to draw. You're just adding water. That is so cool. That How easy is that? And it's so, yeah, it is. It's so easy. It's, I mean, it's it really, it's, I'm not sure it gets any easier than that, but yeah, you can keep going. You could do as much or as little as you want and you can do multiple colors. You could also come in here and do your outline in one color. And then instead of water, be using like other colors of watercolors and doing different variations, depending on how much time you want to spend and how artistic you want to get. But this reminds me of like adult coloring books, except you're, you know, it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's really fun and super easy. Easy. So I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to show you how I would change colors because I think that's really fun too. And then we have even more ideas. We have lots of fun today. It's all those little techniquey fun things that don't necessarily always get talked about, but should because they're so much fun. Okay. So back I go and I've got a piece of paper on there. And your process is the same. And yes, you could do, um, it could be different things like, oh, it could be, you know, if you had SVG files, whatever you had, you could absolutely use those. And then I've got my pens here. Let's see. Oh, wait, we want to see those. Let me see all those pens. Oh, lots oh. and lots of colors. So you guys can keep ad asking your questions and at the end I'll grab some of the ones that I think that uh, would be good to answer. So just, you can keep asking it. I'm not, I didn't miss them just so you know that. I'll ask them at the end, so. Okay, so let's go back in and see if I can find it. There we go. So this is a fun one, this one, and we can size it as well. We can do all the things you would normally do there. And I'm gonna put it right here in the center. Okay. Oops, not cut. Draw. And then we go through our process. So we got our pen. Are you on the uh, Are you on the SDX two two five? Yeah, yeah. And this will work exactly the same on any of the SDX models. So if you have any of them and you're trying to figure out how this would work, it would be exactly the same process, which is really nice because you don't have to try and find a video specific to it. They'll all work across the board but yes this is a pattern i don't i think this is i don't know if this is the only model model that has this cute little pansy pattern but it's a lot of fun so i'm not going to worry about which lines get drawn first but what i'm going to do i could if i was you know if i was really concerned about this i could but what i'm going to do is just kind of watch where it's drawing and then once we've got some of the parts done like i think about Okay, so I paused it, pull my pen out and cap it, and put a different color in. And I need to loosen it up there. There we go. And then no shortcuts, always double check because you want it to be Christina, you can just do the right in there. Just, you know, I mean, yes, paper, you can. any paper. Yeah, any material that, that you can draw on, you can do. And then I just push start. And it's going to go off to the side and come back. But it'll take off right where we were. And let's see, did I do, I think I'm doing purple leaves now, but that's okay. <laughs> it's just for the fun of it. If you wanted to know, I would do a test run first if you were trying to get really specific colors on specific parts. I don't really mind what's what color. I just wanted to show you guys the fun of 
when you know, and if you count in there, you know, okay, well, there's this many lines. So I know that, you know, the next part is coming up. Yeah. So I'm just watching down here. I'm watching the leaf. So when I see the leaf get full, I know then it's time for outline. And Deanna, yes, uh, for the scanning cut that I have, the um, I mean, each one has different packages, but the 225 comes with a set of uh, smaller pens, not the ones that she has there. Right. These are pens that you would purchase separately. And then, you know, if we're doing all purples, I think I'll do, I don't know, I think I'll do a different color just for fun. So the same process over and over is really what I'm showing you here that you put the pen in, you tighten it up. And this can be really fun, especially like I did a rainbow unicorn like this. So I just was going really random and then just press start again. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then we can add more colors and then, yep, I, there it is. Now it's doing the outline. So May, uh, yesterday we had, uh, we were talking about the scan and cut and everyone said, you just cannot get enough scan and cut tutorials because there's so much that that machine can do that we don't even realize. I even learn stuff new and every time I see you do stuff on here. You know what? It's absolutely true. And I have hundreds, yes, really hundreds of YouTube videos on the scan and cut. And I'm still always coming up with more. I'm never running out of material for, oh, gee, what will I, you know, what will <laughs> I do this week? Nope. There's always more. There's your so, website down below in case you guys need that. It's down below and Instagram's up above. So now, so like this one, I could do pull that outside line out instead of in. It would give us a cool little look. It's just so much fun. You can absolutely, and by the way, I'm doing watercolor markers here. You could absolutely just do pens or markers that you didn't want to do the water aspect with, that you just wanted them to be colors. That will absolutely work. But I just think it's kind of fun. That's really fun. And then we can, it's just, it's a relaxing kind of a thing. And you could do this and turn it into a card. You could do this and turn it into, well, whatever you want it to be. You can see, and we could even, so I've got that one color on here. So I could even come in here and mix my colors. So I could pull color from one into the other. So, hey, May, can you just say something a little bit about the pen that you're using with the water? Because I think people are, there's a few questions on that. They did, they kind of missed that. This is, so this is a paintbrush that's full of water. So think of like a, like a marker. If you could have a marker filled with water, this is a paintbrush filled with water. It's called a water brush. And the top comes off, you fill it with water. And there's a lot of different brands and a lot of different ones. They're all basically the same though. Um, so basically when I squeeze it, water is coming out of the tip. Oh yeah. So, okay, great. If you don't have one or you don't want one, uh, what you could absolutely do is you could just real easily use a paintbrush plus water. So you don't have to have, you know, that if you just have a paintbrush and dipped it in water over and over again, you would get the same effects. But obviously that would be a whole lot more work. Are you using distilled water or just water out of the sink? Oh, it's just water out of the sink. I don't get too fancy most of the time. You could though, I mean, you can, depends kind of on your water and what the deal is, but yeah, you can see. So That is gorgeous. So much fun. So we could go even further. Of course we can. So here I've got, these are just some stamped images on watercolor paper. And oops, that's the up. And with these ones, I stamp them with a black ink that is permanent. Meaning if I come in here right now, and I will just to show you, if I come in here right now and go like that and put my water on there and mix it around, the black ink is not going to react at all. The black ink is permanent, it's on there. And the reason for that is exactly this. If I'm going to do coloring and do a lot of different things, I don't want that to smear and run and be terrible. So the scan and cut with stamped images is one of my favorite things because, well, it's the, the machine with the built-in scanner. So 
we can do a lot of different things. And I've got a couple of them that I want to show you. The first being, so we've got our images here. And let me just look. Yeah, that's, let me give it one good shake here so that it's dry. Don't want to put wet stuff into the skin and cut. <laughs> Don't. That would be a no-no. <laughs> that would be a no. But... I'll just get, yeah, it's, it's dry. So we'll be, we'll be fine. And yes, you can totally draw on fabric and you could use uh, fabric marking pens too. If you want to mark, say something on your fabric that you're using for sewing a lot of options. Yeah, I've done fabric and I've done felt for hand embroidery is what cool. I use usually do it for. If I'm going to then hand embroider and I want my pattern off the scan and cut. So in fact, that pattern that we, just did the flower. I've done, I've done this in hand embroider. It was so much fun. So much fun. Okay. So then what we're going to do here, we're not going to do scan the scan function because I don't want to cut any, I mean, I don't want to create a, that's not a pattern that I'm going to create. So what I am going to do is pick a pattern and this is fun. So I am going to do two different things here. I am going to Pick a flower. Let's see. I think I like this one. And I'm going to size it down. So now we're going to get tricky. Now we're going to get to combining things here. And that's one of the things I really love about this machine is we can get into, you know, okay, well, I know how to do this and I know how to do that. And then putting things together so that our techniques grow and our possibilities grow too. Well, it looks like my paper came unstuck there. Sometimes that happens with watercolor paper. It's not a big deal. Okay, so it was right here. I can re- We love when you say it's not a big deal because the best part of these live shows, because this happens to a lot of people when they're doing this and now they're watching, what do you do then? Well, what happened is I hadn't put a lot of weight on the back side. You know, I hadn't really pushed down on the bottom side of my paper there. So it scooted a little, but this part doesn't really matter exactly where it is. What I'm going to do is put my little flower right here on top of my stamped image and then we'll pull out a pen. I keep moving my the little base here for my <laughs> pen and that's no good because we need to have it. We need to we need to measure and know that our pen is in the right spot. Okay. So this is going to answer. I saw a ton of questions. Can you use any pen? Is there certain sizes? You're watching how many different pens she's using here. Yes. And we, um, in the beginning, so if you're watching that, if you're just tuning in, then if you go to, when you go to rewatch the beginning, we ta I talked about a whole bunch of different types that I personally use, but as long as it fits in there, it'll work. So that is draw. There we go. So there's a lot, yeah, there's lots. And one of the things that I have done with the pen is if I come across a material that's slightly too thick for the scan and cut to cut, I know one of the things I've seen done and I've done it myself is if it's slightly too, too dense to cut, you could draw your pattern on it. If there was something, I mean, that's going to be one heck of a dense thing that I don't really want to cut myself, but it could be done. So there's that. And then we could... I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to put this back in, but I could go in here and add my water and turn that watercolor, but I'm not going to do that just yet because next what I'm going to do, and I don't know why I took my mat out that time. don't want to do that. I'm going to put it sideways this time. Okay. So then I'll press this down. Actually, I want to make sure it's fairly straight just because it makes it easier when I go to do this next part. So now I'm going to go home screen and I'm going to go pattern and I'm going to find an oval because now I'm going to cut this out. So, oh, and I'll put, take my blade and all you do is drop it back in and close. I love how easy that blade is. Okay. So I'm going to say that's okay. And I know it's going to be somewhere in that region. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it because I know it's going to be somewhere around there. But then what I'll do is go ahead and that button right there in the middle. 
is going to scan them out so we can see where everything is. So many ways to use that scan function, I tell you. We can see your screen's really good today, too, by the way, May. This table is, it's not ideal because I have to drag everything down here, but it's totally ideal because it's actually showing us, you guys are actually able to see what I'm doing. So we can include the whole flower, or if I want to have that kind of cut off there, I can do that. And if you ever get in here and you're trying to adjust it and it's not going just right, this little button right here, will let you just tiny bits at a time adjust. So once you're good with that, we're gonna just click okay all the way through and click on cut. And this has half cut on. And the reason it does is because I was doing my vinyl masks. So it's, that's the last thing I cut. So we just have to turn that off because we want it to cut all the way through the paper. And then we push start. And it's gonna do, so it's doing its auto blades. I didn't have to tell it how, how we want it to cut or what material I'm cutting because it's sensing the material and now it's gonna cut around it for us. There it goes. It's so quiet, oh my gosh. It really is. And so now we've got that cut out. And now I can come in here with my water just like before. And I can just play with this. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just using water, but we absolutely could do more. We could add different colors and we could add whatever we wanted to. But it's so fun to be able to have that option of you can layer it on top of other things and you can do other things with it. You don't just have to do the one technique. You can keep adding on all those great features that the Scan and Cut has to keep customizing. <laughs> Deanna wants to know, does it also do laundry? <laughs> Not yet. That would be the next feature I would like to have, certainly. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I love that it shows the half cut on and off as well. To me, that makes an enormous difference. It makes it so nice. So then, let's see. We do still have time. Hooray. So now I'm going to show you something else. <laughs> now we're going to do something else. So staying within stamps. This is a stamp that is stamped onto, this is um, like label paper. So they actually make specific mask paper that is actually for the purpose that I'm about to show you. I just don't have any and it's quarantine life. So we got to make it work with what we've got. Which is very cool. So the label paper can work. My only caution to you is you're going to want to be careful when you if you're using something that's not masking paper if you're using label paper what I usually do is tap it on my hand well I'll show you I'll show you I tap it on my hand a few times to de-stick it because it's just a little too sticky so we're going to go into scan and this time we're going to direct cut so direct cut means I want to cut out what I have here and the rule for images, if you don't already know, the rule for images is there has to be a clear outline. So here are two examples. They both have clear outlines. There is clearly a line that you would be cutting on. If it doesn't have a clear outline, what you're gonna need to do is make one. So that, that's a that could be a topic for a whole nother time because you can sit there, but essentially what you would do is you would use your pen um, you would use your pen. So for example, you know, if we wanted it to loop around her, we would use our pen and go at whatever distance we wanted around her. And I think I'll actually show you that because that's a lot of fun too. And that sometimes gets to be a little bit mind blowing. It's an awful fun thing because it's so easy. And once you've done it, then you go, oh my gosh, why have I not been doing this with images? So we scan it in. And we say, okay, and you could see there's a lot of random little, it picks up the tiniest little bits. So we're gonna go like so, all the way in because we only want our little bunny friend here to go. And then I'm gonna preview it. And if it looks good, great. 
if it looks good when you're going in there and you're going, okay, well, that's exactly what I want, then you're good to go. And you just click OK. If it's not, you can play around with different ways of doing it, adjusting it. And then this is interesting because this outline distance, if we put an outline on it, what it's going to do is add a border around the edge. Or if we go negative, it will cut inside the line that we made. So that's kind of a fun one. I'm going to go ahead and set that. And then we're going to cut it. Now what we're going to do, because this is this paper, we're going to put our half cut back on. Because we want it to cut the sticker and not the backing. And this would be true if you were making stickers. You would do the same thing because you would want to cut the sticker out but not the paper that it was on. Which makes total sense. And also somebody was saying this would make awesome stickers. Definitely. That's what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, you could do. So what I'm doing right now, you absolutely could use if you were making stickers. There it goes. It's so fast too. It's super fast, but I still can't believe how quiet it is. And it's, it's, your mic is right there. Yeah, my, my mic is inches from it. So it is super quiet and you can see, there we go, ta-da. So there oh she is, God. cut out. Now, if we had done an exact line, it would have drawn right exactly on the line. And, and this is where I'm going with this one. So that can make stickers. So that technique works for a lot of different things. We could now have stickers. We could have lots of different things that we do with that. But if we use it like so and place it, over our image. I'm not going to place that super hard just because I don't want um, I don't want it to get stuck on there. Hopefully I didn't stick it enough to get it stuck on there. But now if we went and did things like colored on it, and this could be any color medium, you could use like little ink pads with different effects, whatever you might be working with here. I'm just showing you by doing that, we just created a mask. So when we go to peel it back away, don't be tricky. It wants, to, <laughs> it wants to be a little tricky because I tried to do that quickly instead of properly. But what that will do is it will create, because I left that little bit of an edge, and this, by the way, that all peels off. Don't worry. You know, if you, if you saw a little bit on there, what you would want to do is let it dry. And then as soon as it dries, I know I'm the queen of saying, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. But it really will be because as soon as that's dry, that little bit wipes off. And I've also found somebody gave, I don't remember who it was, but somebody tipped me off a lot of times after this is dry, a little pencil eraser sometimes will erase the gummy bits off. But in oh, this case, right. yeah. it was super easy. It all came, it all came right off, but you can see that line that creates because I left that. So that's, if you were masking, and I know some people like to do stamps and do like a whole bunch of different stamps, we can make a whole bunch of different stamps, layer them all up, color it all up, and those masks would protect, which I think is super fun because then, then you've got all kinds of, of different things that you can do with that. And then what I'll show you now, this guy. So these stamps, my ink pad is getting a little dry, but quarantine life, right? So we're making it work. <laughs> So instead of worrying about, oh gosh, you know, my black ink pad is getting a little gray, I just took a permanent black pen and drew the outline actually on both of the, oh no, not this one yet, just this one. I drew the outline and all you're going to do is just on any outline pieces, you're just drawing a line. And what's funny about it is what you're going to end up seeing, you won't actually end up seeing that line. So that's what I was telling you about that if you don't have a clear line, how are you going to cut around it? You're going to draw your own line. So this can be something, and it's, there's not very many instances where I want to do this, but it's a handy thing to know. So I'll show you that. If this is for if you absolutely don't have a clear line. If you had something like this where there was just like one little sketchy part, all you would want to do is just fill it in, you know, whichever part wasn't full. Because then when by filling that in, you just finish the line. But if you've got a part that just really does not have a closed line, I'm going to show you what to do on that right there. So we're going to do direct cut again. 
and this is going to get fun. So actually, this is all fun. All this skin and stuff, cut stuff is fun. I think one of the things I miss the most is doing, doing the shows and doing, doing the events where we get to just, that's my job. I sit there and talk about this can and cut all day long and it's so much fun. Okay. So we see our images and we're going to click OK. And then I'm just going to bring this in here. And yes, I know that's a question I get a lot. Can you do multiple images? You see that it can, well, hopefully you can see that. It is showing me my heart outline. It is showing me my bunny outline. And then it's showing a little line right here. And that's from my watercolor. And that's OK, though, because watch. This thing, ignore object size. If we just keep going up, what's going to happen is when we get to the size of that object, it's going to disappear or it's going to turn pale. There it goes. It looks like there's something up there too. Maybe not. There it goes. Okay, so there's a line here and there was a line here. And as soon as I got up to ignore object size one inch, they went away. So that's how we know we're good to go. Now, I'm going to say OK. Now, there's one problem here. It's not really a problem, but I'll explain. Whatever items we have on here, and they're all, we want to cut all of them. So this bunny, I want to go a negative line, because I don't want the line that I drew to cut. I want that to be left behind. I want the line to be on the, the cutting line I want to be on the inside of my line. The problem is, as you can see, the heart is getting altered as well. So here's our fix. We're going to go like this. And now we can't cut them at the same time if we want to change the rules. Normally, if I was doing this, like let's say I was making a bunch of stickers, I would want the same rule for everything on my sheet. So if that's the case, then you're just fine. And I'm going to go... 0 0.06 on the inside. And I'll show you what that does. So this is a fun way around it. Or if you just happen to have something that you just want, kind of a funky shape and you can't figure out how to do it, draw your own line will work. Half cut is on. No, I don't want half cut on. Okay. Make sure you're nice and stuck on there. I know it's always funny. For these shows, we stand. I stand over my machine in an unusual position, so sometimes I bump into the mat. And we call it into, yoga. creative <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yes. So if I bump into the mat, though, then I have loosened my material or my mat, and then we could have things flying. Okay, so you see how we can see the entire line that I drew is intact, which means that my cut piece does not have any of that line. Wow. Which is a really cool thing when you're trying to get a certain look and a certain part of that cut out, but without, you know, without it going. Now, I know some people go, well, but you had to do the work to draw this line. Yeah, I wouldn't do this for something that was super, super intricate. I don't think I would sit. I think I would just cut it out. I mean, if it was going to take a really long time to draw, I think I would just probably cut it out myself and we can cut our heart out next. But it's really, really useful when you're just looking at, you know, you're just trying to do, um, you know, something simple like that. Like you just want this one particular shape in this one particular way. That's just a great example of how you can make it work. Hey, Barbara, right. this is SDX225 is the scan and cut that she's using at this right here. Okay. And, I, and you can see how easy it is once you've done it a couple times. It's the same process always which is really nice because then no matter what you're doing, uh, for example, if I did, so the, the vinyl that I did here, I didn't find a font that I quite liked. So I, went and I hand drew my own Z with my own little outline because that gold is just, and that's how fine you can get with, when people say how fine can you get with the vinyl, that's how tiny you can get, or well, you can get possibly even tinier, but you see how detailed that vinyl is. So I hand drew my own pieces and then scanned them in. So it's not just for stamps either. You can do a lot of different things with your scan and cut. Okay. And then this one, 
want a big outline on. So this one will go outside the line and let the line show. And something I always tell people if they're worried, like the pen work that's showing on here, sometimes you'll worry about, oh, well, will it show up or will it be visible? If you're going to color this image, the answer is no. If you're going to go and add whatever inks or paints or pens or whatever to, this, to the image that you're cutting out, you definitely won't notice it. Which I know sounds kind of funny, but it's really true. All right, now I'm going to... Okay. Yeah, it's just it was just warning me. By the way, you know, when you unload your mat, things might shift around. Yes, they might. So <laughs> then that one has, has the outline. And you do still notice it a little bit on this. But if we move this out of our way here. And we add a bit of... So if we start adding a bit of color... And again, it could be any color at all. I'm just kind of kind of playing around here with the pens that I already have out. And it doesn't have to be pens either. That just happens to be when I get in a in a zone here where I'm creating, I tend to keep using the mediums that I already have out <laughs> because it's just easier than going and digging everything else back up, especially if it's working. But when you get to start coloring, you're going to notice less and less of that there's a line. And if it really is still bothering you, you can just increase the line or you can fix part like that's a little thicker than the rest we could just thicken all the rest of it there's a lot of options that we've got as far as what we've got and how we how it's looking and how we like it and what we want to do that looks awesome that's really cool so that's that yes <laughs> It is, it is a lot of, a lot of different options. I know a lot of people who use the scan and cut for quilting exclusively. And I know, um, I don't do that, but it's something that I know a lot of people have a lot of fun with. Yes, Vivian, you can watch this again. If you just um, either share it to your timeline or come back to brother, you can watch it on Facebook or YouTube. And it's, I'm, I have to, I should do a poll. How many of you have your scan and cut that you have not taken out of the box? All right, I'm going to bring this back up here. Hold on one sec. I know. <laughs> You're back. Hi. So when people say out of the box, my, my suggestion is always just to go through and just cut, not anything fancy, but just cut one piece of anything one piece of whatever material is something easy you know just something okay i'm going to go through and cut this one thing and just see walk through the process because what you guys will find is like all this all this fun stuff that we've been playing with here already today it all comes back to the same like understanding just the base process and i think that that's really important too so you don't get too frustrated or don't get too overwhelmed with what you want and then the other thing is break it breaking it down like for example this one where we went and we i wanted a flower i wanted a flower on it but i also wanted it cut into an oval and then this i will turn into a card so this i will mount onto a card but i knew what i the pieces i wanted so breaking it down into these are the things that i want so then i need to break down well first i need to stamp it and then i need to scan it and do the draw function, and then I need to cut it out, and then I build my card. So just kind of backing it up. I know with a lot of sewing projects, you have to kind of, here's what I want, now I need to back up, and here's where I need to start. And it's the same right. kind of a thing where you want to just walk through, where do you want to start it? I agree. I'm reading through these some of these comments. Um, will I be using the Scan and Cut on Friday? To, yes. So you... You're really good, Dee. <laughs> uh, Friday, I'll be using the Scan and Cook. So I'm going to show you how to make that towel with the applique. So it ties in with the sewing machine. So uh, just another way to use it to cut fabric. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, and I saw quite a few questions about rhinestones. And if you go back and watch our videos, was it last week or the week before, May, that you Two did weeks. rhinestones? Two weeks ago, we did a whole show on rhinestones. Yeah, just go back to the Brother Sews page and you can scroll. If you click on their videos, which is on the left-hand side, you can even click on live video and just scroll back until you – May's been on every Tuesday, so you can find it really easy. Um, May, do you have a Facebook page? Yes, she does. I do. So I am Craft with May on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, and I have our websites down below. If you look down below, 
uh, mayflom.com, angelwolf.com, blog.scanandcut.com. And then our Instagrams are up above, which we love it if you follow us on Instagram. That's where we share fun photos. Uh, let's. I'm, I'm reading all the people who said it's still they're still in the box. <laughs> That's you know it reminds me of the surgery when people buy a surgery that I'll say how many took it out of the box? They'll be like, kinda. <laughs> but you make it so easy, May. I, I'm watching you, and I've gotten so many fun tips. I didn't use it as often as I do now. So let's see. We need more scan and cut classes. Well, you should go to May's YouTube page and follow her because she has a ton of tutorials on there. I do, and I have a bunch that I'm editing right now that'll start going up hopefully later this week, all things, <laughs> everything stays calm and good. Um, it's it's all going thing. And the thing, so fabric cutting, I think, so you're doing a Friday, I just made a note to myself to tune in Friday to see how you're doing the applique with the fabric. I think it's important to note that the material wise, no matter what we cut, if it's thermoplastic, if it's acetate, if it's paper, if it's cork, felt, fabric, it's always the same process. Yeah. So you don't have to, I know I've had people ask me like, what do I have to change about my process? And it's always the same process, which I think is so nice. You don't have to like learn a different program or learn a different way of doing things. Once you know how to work the machine, you'll be able to put through whatever it is you'd like to put through. I agree. I'm just, uh, where are you reading these remarks? I don't see them listed. So Mary, you're on oh, YouTube. One that came up. <laughs> yeah. So Mary, you're on oh. YouTube. And I'm, I, all of your comments from YouTube and Facebook show up on um, our page so we can see you. It's just a, a little trick that we have so we can see what you're commenting on. That's why I bring them up so you can see them. Um, I'm reading a lot. Somebody had asked a couple questions about um, now the pen holder that you have is different than that's a different one than the one that comes with it, correct? Oh, that's a good question. I think the pen holder, let me go grab mine. That's a good question. Yeah, so here, mine, which I have the SDX 225, I came with this pen holder, which has a little bit smaller. I just gonna say. Yeah, yours so, will add to something different. This, yep. And so, fabric marking pens, which is great for marking if you're trying to mark quilting or patterns, yeah. fabric marking and marking. So what you have there, though, is a separate thing that you can get with a scan and cut where you can put in other pens, like other you know, other sizes and things. It's, I believe, at least it used to be, I'm assuming it's still called the universal pen holder because it's almost universal that any pen will go in here and work. Yep, I agree. I think it is. I'll double check before Friday, but I'm almost positive you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, at least it was called that. Assuming they didn't change its name. So it's yeah, the universal you pen holder. And, and the reason that you would have this, so the other one, that's so funny, <laughs> it's still here in its bag waiting for me to, to use it. The other one, the way the other one works, it's, it's almost more like a blade holder because these yeah. little these little pens have specific markings and specific spots so that you can just put it right in here, close the lid and go. You don't need right. to do the measuring. This one with the measuring, it's because, you know, they're not the scan and cut official pen, little pens. So whatever pen you have in here, you're going to need to be able to measure and know that you've got it set at the right spot. So yeah. it's, just, it's a different tool, but you know what, this, this is one of the tools that I tell people, you know, what add-ons should I purchase or what else should I do? To me, this one, especially if you're going to do anything from the hand embroidery patterns that I put on the fabric, or you want to do stamping and you want to do coloring, I mean, there's so many different uses for it. I think it's one of the most versatile add-on tools you can get. I agree. Uh, you can get the Universal Pen Holder, call your local brother dealer, and you can I can I they might be able to even ship those but you can just stop by and they'll throw it in the back of your car it's what I always say the trunk <laughs> right now during the quarantine uh let's see Did, oh somebody has the Disney scan and cut came both with the regular okay. and the regular pen I was wondering I was thinking that one of them I didn't want to say it thank you for saying that Lynn because I didn't want to say it but I have two of them and so, I I was really surprised to find that I had two of them and I went, okay, one of these machines came with it. 
I only have one. Yes, I'm trying to figure out which machine. It was the Disney one. So the Disney one also came with some starter rhinestone starters. It comes with a lot of really fun stuff, that Disney one. Yes. And also, you know, as time changes, the boxes change and what goes with it changes. So just ask your dealer what's in there. That's the best yep. way. Uh, let's see. I may have missed this, but what is the largest size you can cut on the scan and cut? Oh, that's a good question. So if it's, if it's vinyl, if it's vinyl on the roll feeder attachment, mm -hmm. it's up to, is it 60? I want to say, or just under, I think, no, I think it's 60 inches. I think it might be five feet, but there's a certain amount. So long roll of vinyl you can cut. I want to say it's 60 inches for some reason. Um, I know you can cut really long because I've done a whole roll of vinyl one time and I was like blown away how long that was but otherwise your cutting area is going to be 12 by 24 if you have so the mat that i use today is 12 by 12. yeah there's also a 12 by 24. so which you guys might have seen me use the 12 by 24 because i use it to cut to do intricate cutting in garments like a skirt or a sleeve that's what i use that for so the longer I use one the 12 by 24 a lot on things like uh, I did like I did a big decorative pillow and I wanted a big applique thing like a swirly fun thing to put on it so I needed it longer than 12 inches and that really comes in handy a lot yeah I agree uh yes uh by the way sh uh, is that Sharon that asked this yes this is the same scan and cut that Emily was using yesterday scan and cut's been coming out all over the place the last couple weeks <laughs> definitely have to try now May this was super fun uh, I oh, love learning okay. new things. I am definitely adding, as soon as I can go shopping again, these watercolor, the watercolor pens. I like, <laughs> I like that water pen. That's pretty cool. You know what? Those are really, these are really, those are really nifty. To me, it's nifty because it's just less mess than yeah. I have my paintbrush and I keep dipping in water to just kind of draw with it and water is just coming out is a lot of fun for a lot of different projects. I agree. So, you guys, you can go over to her page because she has a ton of videos on there. She's got a ton of videos on YouTube as well. Brother So, Brother Crafting has videos. Um, I don't have too many scan and cut ones, but I have a lot with the serger for those of you that have the serger in the box <laughs> on my YouTube channel. And on Brother Crafts on the blog.scanandcut.com that keeps scrolling across the bottom there, there are so many video tutorials. I know I do different ones for them every month in addition to the ones on my own. And there's a lot of contributors and those are really, really fun. If you have a scan and cut, the other one I really like is going on the Canvas workspace and the little free projects. A yeah. lot of times you click on it and there's a little video that like shows how to do that project. And I love those because they can get really quick inspiration and go, okay, well here, I've got my project, I've got my download and here I go off to make a complete project. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And Nancy In says, fact, thank you. Yeah, I haven't done it yet. The, just talking about that, now I gotta break myself up. Another note to self, Angela, we had found those cute little faces. Oh, on the yeah. Free project, and I forgot all about it. I did too. So I'm drawing, this is my project pad. I do, I keep like little notes and little projects, you know, like when I get these ideas. So I'm gonna have to remind myself why there's a crazy funny face on my project pad. <laughs> We have to do the funny faces for on the masks. I think that would be super fun. Yes. I'm just I'm just writing myself notes. I always end up writing myself notes when we do these shows and then we end up bringing like the watercolor that came up last week and people were asking about that so now it comes back. There's always new fun things to talk about and add. Definitely new fun things. So, well, everyone, thank you for joining us today, May. That was awesome, inspirational. Everybody's really excited to get their scan and cut out and start playing around. <laughs> I love you, and be sure to show me. I love seeing, I love when people tag me and show me what they've been making and what they've been doing. That's always one of my favorite things. So don't forget to do that, guys, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You're on Twitter, right? You're all over. I'm not on Twitter. Okay, so. I, mean, I think technically I think technically, I am, but I'm not. I don't think I've been on Twitter in years. I'm kind of the same thing. I'm uh, Instagram and Facebook is, and YouTube are my three big ones. So uh, but we do love to see what you're working on and be sure to thank brother for letting us take over their page. Cause may uh, we've been, you and I've been doing this on Tuesdays for oh, almost two months now. It's been so much fun. Have. It's time is it's helping the time to fly by. I'll tell you that keeping nice and busy with all these craft projects. I totally agree. So, uh, so may 
next week is the let's see we're doing an apron so along for the apron entire week. week i it's can hardly apron wait. Week. it's so have, you know what i love i love aprons i never i never have a pattern i always i always just make it up as i go along but i love aprons and I have a couple of really fun ones from a convention that I did with brother last summer and I found them. So I'll be showing you guys those. And then we'll also be talking about techniques, crafty techniques with the scan and cut that we can add to our aprons, which is so much fun. That's going to be awesome. So next, that's next week. If you go to AngelaWolf.com, I have all the details of the pattern I'm going to be using. Um, and we're going to have Molly and Reen each day kind of helping us. I'm going to be sewing. And then each day we're going to have people pop in and show all these other things. And you just heard what uh, you're going to see next Tuesday. So for those of you that want something really fun to do, I saw Reen was on here. Reen's coming on on Thursday to show how to do an In the Who project. May, she made this entire thing using my design center on a brother's sewing machine, embroidery machine, and there's not one bit of sewing on here. It's all embroidery. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I know, and the inside is even, it's fully lined. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so Reen from Embroidery Gardens coming on on Thursday. I think that's at four o'clock. So tomorrow- I, another note. I need to see that, I need to know about that. <laughs> I know. I, I love watching these shows because I'm, I'm I, well, I'm here, so I get to watch them, but I've actually gone back and watched more to add to my list of must to do. Again, I am so excited about all of this, um, the paper crafts that I've learned because I've actually made four cards now since I don't go shopping. <laughs> and I love it. I saw a ton of people on here say, I'm never made, I'm never buying a card again. I'm making all of mine. Well, people will love that too. It's a great Absolutely. gift. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I will see you next week. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe. At least you can go shopping a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Although probably won't. I probably won't, but we could. Yeah, in theory, there's a few things we can get now, so that's always good. Yeah. Well, have a great week, you guys. Go visit her and go visit both of us on Instagram. Be sure to tag us. We'd love to see what you're doing. And uh, until next time, happy sewing and crafting, everyone. Bye.